Welcome. This video is going to be about bonding theory, where we're going to look at bond um, orbital hybridization and sigma and pi bonding. And we think of bonds as forming through the overlap of half-filled orbitals. So in other words, unpaired electrons in different orbitals will overlap and become paired. We have an example down here with SH2, where you can see that our sulfur here has two unpaired electrons and each hydrogen has one unpaired electron and each of those unpaired electrons are spots where bonds can form where those these orbitals that are only half filled can fill up and become filled orbitals and we can see this over here in this diagram uh, this happening so we can see a p orbital from s remember these p orbitals are dumbbell shaped overlapping with an s orbital from hydrogen which is kind of a spherical shape and when they overlap we now have a filled orbital and those two shared electrons, we call that a covalent bond. Same thing is happening over here on the right. So this is overlap of what we call standard orbitals. So the standard shapes and you know the SPD that we would predict based on our you know quantum theory we've talked about and electron configurations. However, these standard orbitals do not adequately explain the bonding in lots of other molecules. A big example of this is carbon. So if you look at the electron configuration of carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And if you look at the valence orbitals in carbon, we see there's just two unpaired electrons there. So we might predict that carbon would only form two bonds. In reality, we see carbon often forming four bonds, like this example, this methane molecule right here. So how can we explain this? Well, our hybridization theory, our theory of orbital hybridization, tells us that orbitals in a molecule are not necessarily the same as orbitals in an atom. So atomic orbitals are going to combine to form new orbitals called hybrid orbitals, and this is corresponding to our observed bonding patterns and molecular shapes that we see. So let's look at some examples of this. So here's the atomic, the standard, let's call these the standard uh, atomic orbitals if we had a single atom of carbon over here on the left, we would expect it to form two bonds. Here over here is a molecule of methane where carbon is forming four bonds. So what we observe here is this carbon is forming four bonds. That tells us that carbon must have four orbitals with unpaired electrons in them. So let's see how we get that. Well, the way that we get this is we are going to take um, all four of these orbitals right here, okay, mix them together in a pot and come up with four new orbitals. One, two, three, four. Now notice I drew them all in the same line. That's because these orbitals are all equal to each other. Over here, the P orbitals are a little bit higher energy than the S, but now we've made four orbitals that are all equal to each other. And they are each, they are made by combining one S and three P orbitals. So we can think of them as being one part s, three parts p orbital. So we call them sp3 orbitals. And since now we have four electrons divided amongst four orbitals of equal energy, remember our rule is that the electrons will go one in each orbital before they start pairing up. So now I've got four orbitals with unpaired electrons. So that explains uh, how my carbon here can form four bonds. We call these bonds sigma bonds. So whenever you have a single bond, we call it a sigma bond. And the sigma bond is going to be uh, due to, let's draw a little picture of it. It would be like, uh -huh, you've got these electron clouds overlapping along what we call the internuclear axis. So imagine here's two sp3 orbitals and imagine this little you know, dotted line down here between the nuclei. The electrons are overlapping in between the two nuclei. Okay, let's look at another example. Again, we're looking at carbon, but here we have a different molecule of carbon. In this case, your carbon only has, has atoms on three sides. Okay, so it's got three, what we call, you know, charge clouds, electron clouds, whatever we call them around it. So that means it's going to need to have three, um, three hybrid orbitals. And it is still forming four bonds. So we'll 
we'll see where what happens there in a minute. Okay, so we need three hybrid orbitals. So to get that, what we're going to do is we're going to combine two of my p orbitals and my 1s orbital. And we're going to combine them together to make three orbitals that are all equal in energy. And they are made from one part s, two parts p. So I'm going to call them sp2 orbitals. And then I'm still going to have my unhybridized 2p orbital up here. So I've got one unhybridized orbital and three hybridized orbital. These three electrons that were over here are now going to be evenly spread out amongst my sp2 orbitals. And what this is, is these three are going to form my sigma bonds. So up here in the picture, that would be like this one, this one, and this one. These are my three sigma bonds. These are where, so my hybrid orbitals are overlapping, their electron clouds are overlapping with the electron cloud from hydrogen or from oxygen. And then this other, uh, my unhybridized orbital right here, this one's going to be involved in what we call pi bonding. So that's this right here. So whenever you have a um, double or a triple bond, you will end up with some pi bonding happening. And if we're trying to draw a picture of what this looks like, it's kind of tricky here. But if you look at the carbon and the oxygen, we've got a sigma bond happening in which the electron clouds are overlapping along the internuclear axis. And it's, hard, it's hard to draw. And then the pi bond is happening perpendicular to the axis. So there's some, um, in the pi bond, there's electron sharing happening above and below that nu internuclear axis. So this is how you get a, a double bond, is actually from one sigma bond and one pi bond. And the sigma bonds are typically made using hybrid orbitals, and the pi bonds come from the unhybridized p orbitals, because those p orbitals can kind of stick off in different directions. Uh, okay, so that is, so that, let's summarize this here. It's got, we've got three sigma bonds and one pi bond in this molecule. Let's look at one more example with carbon. So we still have carbon. It's still forming um, four bonds. But you'll notice it just has two charge clouds around that central atom. So we're going to need to make two hybrid orbitals. Okay, so like this carbon has, when we say two charge clouds, it means the carbon has electrons on two sides. On, in this case, like we can call them the right and the left. Okay. Uh, so it's going to have two hybrid orbitals. So let's look back over here to my atomic carbon, the standard orbitals. And what we're going to do is we're going to hybridize these two orbitals here, and we're going to call these sp orbitals. So these two electrons that were paired up in the s are now going to be split up between in these new sp hybrid orbitals. And then notice we still have some uh, unhybridized p orbitals. Okay, and these these unhybrid orbitals are available for pi bonding, and my hybrid orbitals are going to be available for sigma bonding. So if you look up here, let's, let's color this in, these are going to be my sigma bonds, and then my carbon can form a second bond here. These guys right here are going to be my pi bonds. So this molecule overall has two sigma bonds that occur from the overlapping hybrid orbitals, and then two pi bonds that occur from the overlapping unhybridized p orbitals. All right, let's look at an example that's not carbon. So let's look at sulfur. Sulfur is an example of an element that can form an expanded octet. And we know that the only elements that can form expanded octet are those that are in the third row and below. And we'll be able to see why a little bit looking at this example. So here's the um, orbital, the electron configuration for phosphorus right up here. And if we write out the orbital diagram for just that valent shell, it looks like this. We've got electrons paired up in the S. Um, you've got three unpaired electrons in the P. So we might expect that phosphorus will form three bonds. And that, that's actually what it does a lot of the time. But since the um, valence shell is shell 3, 
that means there are also d orbitals around. And these d orbitals are empty, that's why they didn't show up in our electron configuration. But they're, they're there, they're hanging out, they're available. So again, phosphorus a lot of the time forms free bonds, but sometimes it can make um, the... Oh, I just realized I put a wrong example. This one's actually sulfur. Okay, let's do an example with phosphorus. Um, so there we go. Sorry, hits this. So phosphorus can form things like PF5. It can actually form an expanded octet. And so in PF5, it would look like this. You're going to have um, five fluorines attached to my phosphorus. Okay. And so. What's going on here is your, your phosphorus is actually forming five bonds. So how can it do that? It seems like it should only form three bonds. Well, it's going to be due to these hybrid orbitals. So let's hybridize this. Um, we need five bonds. We need five hybrid orbitals. So we need to take five of these orbitals over here. So I have, I have an S. That's one, two, three, four. And then I need to take one up here from the D as well, because I need to hybridize five orbitals. So I'm going to take these five right here, and I'm going to mix them together, and I'm going to come up with five new orbitals, one, two, three, four, five, and I call these orbitals sp3d, because they're made from combining one s, three p's, and one d. And now I've got five electrons in five orbitals, so I'm going to put one electron in each, and voila, we can see how phosphorus can form um, five bonds. And these bonds are all sigma bonds. So I have five sigma bonds. There are no pi bonds in this example. You only have pi bonding happening when you have a double or a triple bond. And also notice I don't have any unhybridized p orbitals around. So pi bonds happen with the unhybridized p orbitals, and I don't have any of those in this example. Okay, so this is an overview of hybridization and sigma and pi bonding.